After a triumphant 50th season last year, the Boston Ballet is set to start a new chapter as the company presents classical, neoclassical, and contemporary dance to growing audiences. I'm Jenny Johnson for Comcast Newsmakers. At the Modern Theater in downtown Boston, Miko Nissanen, Boston Ballet's artistic director, joins Newsmakers. Welcome back, Miko. Thank you so much for having me. Always a pleasure to see you. Now, as the Boston Ballet begins a new chapter, the second 50 years, what are some of the highlights? Well, I think, first of all, just to start and rethink everything uh, for the second 50 years, years is really exciting. And of course, we're going to start the whole season with a brand new Swan Lake. I'm revamping the production and we're building all new sets and costumes. So that's the classic of the classic. So that's very exciting. And there's so much fantastic repertoire to follow. All right. So share a little bit more about this Swan Lake. It's a, it's, it's share a little bit about your vision and how it's different and, and what it's going to be like this season. Well, of course, it's going to be very classical. I'm going to try to stylize the swans a little bit to the different extent. I want them to see a little bit more regal and bigger. And the sets and costumes are by Robert Breziola. I'm telling, giving a new beginning for the ballet. It's told in a synopsis usually that these girls are captured and turned into swans. I'm actually going to show that as a prologue. And then the ending also usually, uh, or often may I say, is happy ending. This time the spell is broken and she can be turned into a woman again and she returns to the lake and Prince Siegfried will follow her and the wa waves will take care of him and he will drown. Okay, well this sounds like a very exciting rendition that people will definitely have to see this season. Now you mentioned Robert Perziola and you collaborated with him on the Nutcracker in 2012, but give us a sense of what magic Boston Ballet audiences can expect this holiday season. Uh, I mean the Nutcracker, Robert brought such a wonderful rich uh, platform for the Nutcracker and we have so many new dancers who are making uh, debuts in a row and it promises to be a great Nutcracker season. What is the Nutcracker season like for you? Is it very busy and, and very exciting for all the audiences coming to? Well, you know, it's, it's, we do it annually. It's 43 shows so it's lots of work. Sometimes we have up to 10 casts. And, uh, but it, it never loses its magic. And then for me, after, you know, if I ever get tired and when I leave the theater, I see little kids dancing on, on the streets, the parents are beaming, and nothing grandparents is, is happy. Than that. Exactly. So <laughs> it's like, it's very contagious. So we talked about some of the classics Swan Lake and the Nutcracker, but what's in store for the spring? Oh, in the spring, we have a, a, a George Balanchine's episodes, an incredible work. Uh, Wayne McGregor's Chroma, that was a, quite a sensation here a couple of years ago, is uh, coming back. And Hans von Mahnen's Black Cake, a brilliant, funny, satirical ballet. And you don't get all, often that in one. It's sort of about a party that has champagne and gradually gets more toasty. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great way to describe it. So how is such an ambitious season ac accomplished by one company? Well, I have to say, I have to give kudos to our dancers. I mean, they are so versatile. For them to dance works from Forsyth and Killian, uh, Yorma Ello, and then dance Balanchine Neoclassical and the classics. It's a lot to ask, and they can handle it, and that's why I think they are the ballet company of the future. One of the most extraordinary ballet companies I've ever seen. Thank you so much for sharing about the Boston Ballet with us, Miko. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Jenny Johnson.